Hey what bags, it's Jay today back with the survival show. Yes, after a good week and a bit of playing Nightingale, which is fantastic, go and check it out. I am now here with the news you need to catch up on. Big stuff today, including Nintendo finally strike back at Power World. They're taking them to court for patent infringement. Could this be the end of Power World? 4J Studios, the dev team that first ported Minecraft to various different consoles when it came out have announced a brand new sandbox survival game and they're working with Stampy Cat of all people. It's called Reforge and it looks pretty interesting judging by this engine footage. Our Survival Ascended has been shown off its latest paid mod that's going to be coming very soon with a very Greek influence. Anyone that's caught me playing Dawn of Defiance recently might be interested. And is Ferra the Sundered Tribes any good? This is a brand new Monster Hunter style crafting survival game. I've done a review on it on my other channel, but I'll give you some thoughts today. All that, let's go, it's the survival show. So time has finally caught up with Power World. I've long thought it was really odd how they could get away with literally stealing and copying so much of Pokemon's ideas and content. You can absolutely evolve stuff and we've seen it happen with Minecraft and a bunch of games, which we'll talk about a little bit with Reforge. Power World definitely has its own original merits, but you'd be mad to say that it hasn't directly had a huge influence on Pokemon, as well as other survival games, even like Ark. Well, yesterday a lawsuit was filed against the company for patent infringement. They've replied to this only this morning. We received notice of this lawsuit and begin the appropriate legal proceedings investigations into the claims of patent infringement. At this moment, we're unaware of the specific patents we are accused of infringing upon and we have not been notified of such details. Pocket Bear is a small indie game studio based in Tokyo, a goer's company, blah, 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 blah. Feel sorry for us because we're a tiny little company that's made millions. It's unfortunate we're going to have to allocate significant time to matters unrelated to game development due to this lawsuit. However, we'll do our utmost to our fans to ensure that indie game developers are not hindered or discouraged from pursuing their creative ideas. So yeah, Nintendo posted their full statement on September the 19th, literally giving all the details about how they are now taking Pocket Pair, the makers of Power World, to court. Now to be clear, they're saying or allegating that it infringes on patent rights, not copyright. A troll for YouTube or Reddit will absolutely show you a plethora of evidence that says Pocket Pair have absolutely taken a huge inspiration dump from obviously Pokemon. And that might not seem such a big deal. We know Power World's a popular game. We know there's a lot of Pokemon fans out there angry and kind of pissed off that the games they get are nowhere near as good or as engaging. Not in terms of adding something new, but I've always felt that it was kind of off that Power World could just blatantly copy and take so many ideas from Pokemon. Whether or not you agree with them as a company or Nintendo, it was still kind of shady and just not right. Many of the same characters they've taken have similar abilities, so it's gone beyond even just mixing up a little, but when they do the same kind of idea or same job, that presents a problem. Now, I'll probably get a bunch of Power World stands in here going, Ooh, never really played a Pokemon game in my life, so maybe that's why I don't fully understand the full popularity of Power World. Bottom line, Nintendo doesn't appear to be taking Pocket Pair to court though over the lightness instead over mechanics. To read between the lines and obviously pay attention to what it says, pattern rights. Apparently Nintendo must own a bunch of deep mechanics associated with obviously Pokemon. If you think of the most obvious one where you store your creatures in Pokeballs, you can imagine any other property utilizing that would maybe fall under pressure from Nintendo. It's not unheard of for creatures to have abilities and stuff. Nintendo don't earn the rights to have that in a game. And the way that you play your Pokemon games is quite different comparatively to Power World. To be fair, even though I'm not their biggest fan, in defense of Power World, you would say that Nintendo have a big reputation for doing this. Various different fan service videos, content, and yep, absolutely other games too, trying to find the most minute, tiny little thing that you can make a big deal out of to shut something down. Nintendo are not the hero here, they are a big bad nowadays in terms of what they charge for their games, how they don't really innovate a lot of their big, big franchises other than the main two, Mario and Zelda. But they're hugely popular, they dominate the market with Switch, and so they can get away with pretty much being a flat track bully. But yeah, Power World, they're not necessarily the plucky underdogs either. I don't think anyone should be rooting wholeheartedly for a company that's clearly ripped off Pokemon in such big dollops in the past. And so yeah, they're not getting done for that. But Nintendo certainly are trying to strike back. What will end up happening? I can't imagine Power World will actually ever get shut down. If it goes to court, it could be a couple of years before it gets resolved. And by then, the worst case scenario would be something like they have to pay some damages to Nintendo, and maybe a percentage of sales. Pocket Pair are swimming in money, 
As of most recently, I've sold over 25 million copies of their game and they still haven't even released it on PlayStation yet or the Switch. Obviously, that might be a bit difficult when it comes to the Switch in future. That is a crazy amount. Hundreds upon hundreds of millions. Even take into account the money they've spent on making the game, which is probably about 15 to 20 million. Without Pokemon, does Power World exist and make that money? This isn't the first controversy Power World have faced lately. A big article talking about their plans for the future resurfaced again and made a big talking point to the point that they went and added a statement talking about how they're not going to be a live service game but they're not ruling out putting a bunch of microtransactions and DLC skins in the future. This is part of one of the reasons I'm going off Power World as an actually great game and good developer. They have made hundreds of millions. There is no need to go and add skins or anything else, but they clearly have something lined up as they've been working in the last few updates on implementing skins easier. And you can even get Twitch drops by playing on PC, on Steam at least anyway. That will also be coming to Xbox in the future. I'm all for game devs making lots of money. It does come a point where, well, you've made enough money now. You've made enough money to fund your next five games and keep all your developers paid pretty well. Do you really have to go and rinse people for 10, 15, 20 dollar skins? If they come out with just a compelling DLC, I'll absolutely cheer it on, even if it's not my bag. But skins shouldn't be considered the norm. Everyone just seems to think that skins are okay nowadays because Fortnite has changed that landscape alongside other games like Overwatch. But ultimately, these skins are way overpriced for what they really offer. But now we have games being made to sell you skins and that's the primary goal rather than games that actually make you have fun. Anyway, that's a lot of speculation from me. We don't know fully their plans, only just by what they've loosely said. It could end up being a storm in a teacup and they might release skins for like a dollar. Win, lose or settlement, it does look like they're going to have to pay a bit of money now. So yeah, it looks like skins I reckon will definitely be coming to Power World sooner than later. Nintendo are absolutely the big demon megacorp at the moment, but pocket pair, they're not so squeaky clean either. So another paid mod map has been announced. This is Astrius. I've said that wrong, but whatever. It's made by Nikatus, a fan favorite of the modding scene in Ark. It is a Greek influence survival map, and yes, paid mod in the future. There's gonna be a free version released in October the 10th, and then the paid version at some point, I guess next year when it's actually done. So well done, you get to beta and test the experience for other people that will eventually buy it. Now, I'm hating a bit. These actual packs cost pretty much only $5, $10 at max and 50% of it does go to the mod creators themselves. But we all hate snail games, and with Ark Ascended still struggling with decent content that keeps players actually engaged and happy, it would have been nice to have seen this come as an official map for the Ark main game. These maps are usually great. I always question though these crossovers with properties like either Lord of the Rings that have been happening past or Viking sort of mythology, how incorporating they are of the dinosaurs. It often feels like it's just been shoehorned in and the dinosaurs don't really get much of a best glow up. I'm talking giving them some skins, mythological stuff like that. But there are some mythological monsters in here, so they look pretty cool. So you never know, I might check it out on my JPG2 channel, which is meant to be covering art, but I've just been so busy with other stuff, I just haven't had time. Maybe this will draw me back in. So 4J Studios, the port team behind Minecraft when it first launched on Xbox, as well as helping it get onto PlayStation, Switch and other platforms, they've got their own new game just been announced and it does look to very much be inspired by Minecraft, but not trying to be Minecraft 2. There isn't actually any gameplay, we've only got this screenshot and a video showing their engine. But effectively, they're joined up with Stampy Cat. Yes, I know, maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but if you're of a certain age, you've either watched Stampy Cat as a kid or you've watched it as a parent like I did. Most famous for his mini games in his lovely world, Stampy Cat was one of the biggest, most popular Minecraft tubers back in the day. He ended up taking quite a big chunks and breaks away, and he ended his series, I do believe, last year. But he's actually working with them properly, not just in some consultant role like Vin Diesel and Ark, maybe see him once a year. Looks like he's in the office three days a week, and is actually helping really define what this game will be in the future. And it is going to be a sandbox survival experience. 4J Studios haven't actually worked on Minecraft properly for a good few years now, unless it's just been paid content in the paid marketplace. They've actually been developing their own stuff more recently. And yeah, they released a game last year that was a multiplayer kind of mashup, something a bit similar to like Overcooked. And this is the engine that they're using. Not Unity, not Unreal, something they've built themselves. And you can well imagine, it absolutely does remind me a little bit of Minecraft. Maybe the budget version, but certainly it is there. 
They are keen to stress they're not trying to make the next Minecraft. It's going to be much low key. Unlike maybe Hypixel and Hightail, this is all just about them trying to get something out there. So fair play to them. I don't think they'll be getting sued by Mojang anytime soon. As voxel based building games have been around a long time, Minecraft wasn't even the first. I'll for sure keep an eye on this. 4J were actually responsible for Elder Scrolls Oblivion ports to console as well. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they can make. So Ferra, Sundered Tribes is a brand new Monster Hunter style game with that kind of anime agent influence. I gave it a big shot yesterday and you can see a full review of early impressions at least on my other channel, JPG Crafted. I've never been hugely into Monster Hunter style games. I found them quite boring, I ain't gonna lie. Repeatedly taking on the same big monsters and trying to find weak points and just leveling up wasn't always my bag. Hence why I'm not really talking about Monster Hunter Wilds that much. But I thought this one has got seemingly a bit more crafting and a little more of the open world aspect, it could be good. It has got some cool features like this ability to go ahead and grapple and glide, really does make movement quite fun. But at the moment it's definitely a bit undercooked, a little bit scrappy with controls, not that responsive, and you need a pretty much supercomputer to run it or heavily rely on hopefully some optimization options. That can all change though in the future for sure, but it is just a little bit flat. There's not enough enemies or the enemies you do come across one shot you because you're so under leveled and it takes a huge amount to grind and get the stuff needed to really compete. It is testing out a multiplayer function within their early access launch, but it definitely feels like this was a bit too early for even early access. Not the worst game I've played, it certainly did actually run, it wasn't crashing and like I said if you're a big fan of Monster Hunter style games like this or maybe stuff like Dauntless and it's got a fair amount of simulation management where you build up your village, you've got NPCs that will help you gather resources and you basically build a nice little settlement. But yeah, it's definitely lacking in the combat front, it just wasn't that fun and the grind seemingly to get better gear was just pretty much boring. Fingers crossed some updates will really make it a lot better. Go and check the game out for yourself on Steam, read some reviews or see some other gameplay videos. Including my first impressions review, go and check it out right now, JPG Crafted. And that's it, I'm done, dusted, another survival show. Like I've been telling you guys, when I've got big games to cover with big updates that I'm really interested in like Nightingale, you will see me cover that massively for like a week, days on end, whatever it is. But I'm always going to be back with the survival show, especially when there's some big stuff to talk about. And actually, it's been pretty quiet up till now. So there we go. I'll see you for another one very soon. Bye-bye.